Um, thank you, Robert, and um, thank you everyone for being here late. Um, privileged to be here tonight. I wasn't part of the original roster, but uh, mm -hmm. make the most of this opportunity today. Uh, I also have the advantage of being the last one, so I can basically agree with everything that was said. <laughs> uh, no, but like, so what I tried to do today is basically get like a, like a consulting kind of perspective on NDP and SHM methods and are they the same? And to be honest, Thomas definition in the beginning was NDE versus NDT. These slides were actually called NDE. And when I was listing the methods, I had acoustic emission because in my mind, it's an NDE method, but it is not an NDT method. So I took it out <laughs> because it's not NDT. But like in my mind, NDE is really what, what again, Thomas said, it's a big thing. Like you're doing non-destructive evaluation, whether you're doing it with monitoring or you're doing it with NDT, at the end of the day, your goal is to assess the condition of the structure. So um, in, in like consulting, when we are hired to do some of our work and my firm specializes in assessment and repair and rehabilitation. So we're usually looking for answers. And in order for us to really give our client a good answer, we usually need to understand what the problem is in the first place. And NDT and SHM are one of the tools that we use on, on probably a big percentage of our project. I can't put a number, but for myself, I, I would say I use SHM and NDT for like 70% of my project at least uh, to find out what's wrong with the structure. So structure evaluation is a big part of uh, our practice, and that includes structure condition assessment, which is uh, like the usual like visual inspection that we can do. And then once we find that we need to know more, uh, we tend to go to NDT or uh, instrumentation and monitoring to start collecting more information about the structure and what's happening for it. Uh, we have other steps that we usually go through as well. Uh, corrosion assessment and service life modeling is one other thing that, that can follow uh, instrumentation or non-destructive testing. Uh, structure analysis, uh, we sometimes actually rely on what we collect from our field measurements, uh, especially like if you don't have like uh, as-built drawings, you go out with like GPR, uh, as, as Nick was explaining, you can get like the depths of the rebars, the spacing, then you do an inspection opening, find out what's the size and make some assumptions and you can do structural analysis. Uh, we do load testing and that relies on the instrumentation because the acceptance criteria are basically tied to like deflection measurements or in some cases it's strain. And finally we do like design of repairs and, and retrofit. So NDT and instrumentation are essential part of this practice, uh, which is uh, structure evaluation. So why do we use NDT or monitoring? Uh, so there is a lot of reasons why you will use them, but if you wanna put them in like three buckets, which what I would like to do in, in most of the things, uh, these are the buckets that I, I think of. The first one is behavior, why? Uh, so why something is happening? Why my concrete is falling? You have corrosion damage. Uh, and for that, you can use half cell potential measurements to find out where, where are the hot areas with high probability of corrosion damage that may also be damaged uh, in the future, for example. Uh, so why is a question that we usually solve to identify what's the cause of that distress or damage or a problem uh, that you have with, 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 with your structure? So you can do that with NDT or uh, you can do that with monitoring in, in some cases. Uh, the other question is, is validation and Again, the question of this one is, is it okay? Uh, we do that with construction uh, monitoring projects. Uh, and, and this is something that we have seen a big push for, and especially like in cities where they have historic structures and they are building like a new high rise building close to a historic structure. And they are afraid, for example, from vibrations affecting that existing structure. So we do monitoring or we do NDT to start with, to be honest, to see if there is vulnerabilities that they need to consider before they actually do the construction. Uh, the other one, and this is a big one, but this is more in my mind and instrumentation application is emergencies. 
And there is a lot of examples uh, in the past few years of bridges being hit with either like trucks or like in, in, uh, in Louisiana, there was a, a bridge that was hit with uh, like a barge in the river and we did monitoring and that's an emergency situation where you need to really go out right away and try to monitor portion of the structures that's closest to where the damage occurred to make sure that no further damage will happen and the structure is safe so people can actually work on it and, and fix it. Uh, then the last uh, bucket is assessment of repair or retrofit. And again, this is something that we often do with projects that we maybe do something new or uh, have a, a new kind of repair details that we want, want to make sure it's actually working. So we either go back out after a, a few months and, and do some MDT and figure out if, for example, the epoxy injection that I did to fill the cracks is actually still there and there's no debonding. Or uh, with vibrations, when we uh, provide some like floor uh, strengthening to fix a flexible floor issue, you actually need to measure your vibrations because we rely on models to come up with the fixes. So you need to know if your model uh, uh, predictions were actually accurate and your structure is behaving like you designed uh, that repair to, uh, to make it uh, behave. And what they agree on is that we basically have some steps to follow in each of either of these projects, whether it's NDP or monitoring, you need to review available information. You need to develop some kind of an assessment protocol or a monitoring plan. Um, you need some cases do, in all cases you need to do that analysis, but some cases you need to, some, to do some advanced kind of that analysis, whether that's modeling or service life modeling. Uh, you may need to do that depending on the project. And finally, propose some uh, solutions for the problem that you're trying uh, to solve. So here I have just a list of the NDE methods. I'm not going to go through them, but there is a wide array of methods that you can use to figure out different problems. Similar with monitoring. Again, I took acoustic emission from there, and but I left it here because it's a monitoring method. Uh, and again, there's a lot of applications for SHM that you, you can have in the field. Uh, but what I would like to discuss next is when to choose to use NDT uh, versus monitoring. So both of them can be used to assess the condition of the structure. So we establish that part. With NDT, and uh, this is what everyone here again described, is you do that to collect information at a certain point of time. So I go out today, I take a, a, a mere, uh, like you know, ultrasonic shear wave tomography scan today. I have information about the voiding condition today. Tomorrow, I don't know what's, what will be the condition, right? I know it now. With monitoring, typically, and that's important, typically is important, you need to collect information over a certain period of time to understand the long-term behavior of your structure. But that's not the only use of monitoring. And again, Thomas example is you can have some trucks over a bridge, you can measure the strains and you can collect some information about the condition of that bridge when you have the trucks on top of it, right? Same thing with load testing. You load test the structure like using 318 chapter 27 or using 437.2 uh, code and you need to have an instrumentation to collect deflection and from the deflections that you measure, you calculate the criteria and you assess the condition of the structure now. And then you take the loads off and, and you go home. So it's really similar to what NDT can do, but it's using a monitoring technique. Acoustic emission, by the way, has uh, some ASTM standards that you can do this for FRP vessels. So it's, a, it's again similar to what NDT can do, but it's a monitoring technique. So what are the differences when I, when I get a project for NDT and monitoring? Uh, if I have an NDT project, some of them are very simple as such as like, okay, we need to get some information about depths of cover and spacing between boards. So you literally can take your bridge scan card, go to the bridge, do the scans every two feet, go home, collect that information and make some assessment. Some of the instrumentation projects are very similar where you need to measure vibrations uh, of a floor to determine the natural frequency. You can do that. But when you're dealing with a more complex instrumentation project, you can't just go out. You actually need to figure out where to put your sensors. 
before you go out. You, you can't just do it as fast. With MDT, some of the projects will be that complex too, but, but with an instrumentation, you're usually more on the complex side uh, if, it's a, 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 like if it's a big project, like a bridge monitoring project. You need to figure out exactly where your sensors will go, what kind of measurements you need, because you can't just go out and measure everything because the client usually won't pay uh, for you to do that. So, so you need to figure this out first. So there is a little bit more preparation with the SHM projects, uh, especially the long-term ones on like larger structures. Then what will be with some of the typical NDT projects, which can be faster. Again, some of the NDT projects can be very complex too. Uh, and you need to understand this and make the plan before you go. But generally speaking, uh, this will be at least my take. Uh, in terms of budgeting, both can be done relatively simple. But again, with for the most part, when we are called to monitor something, they usually have some kind of big problem that they are trying to fix. Because NDT will be part of the project, but then a monitoring system will go on that bridge or that building and stay there for a while. And that costs money. That's not that's usually not very cheap. Uh, so again, like with, in terms of budgeting, there are a lot of steps that go with budgeting either project, uh, but depends on what you want to measure, that can be also a kind of uh, costly in some cases. And then in terms of implementation, uh, you need to have a plan again for either method. With an instrumentation, you have more steps to think about when you are doing your plan because you can't just put sensors on and, and go home. You need to put sensors on, you need to have some communication protocol, and then you need to, for the most part, create a website for the client because when they pay for instrumentation, you want to see the data in real time as you're collecting it. Uh, even if they don't understand what it, it really means and they <laughs> still need you, they want to see it. Uh, so you need to build that website for them uh, to, to actually, to actually uh, uh, do that. But at the end of the day, NDT or it's a gem are tools that we use, but it's really all about time, the difference between the two. Uh, I would say you can go to a bridge deck and do chain dragging every three months and collect that information over time. And now you are monitoring the progressing this damage using an NDT method, but you are monitoring it. So in my opinion, I think they are really like faces to the same coin, right? You can use NDT or monitoring, and I'm not using structural monitoring, I'm just saying monitoring, to either do a monitoring project or to do an undestructive evaluation project, depending on how you're utilizing uh, these tools. And that was that. Oh, one more thing. So with this HM, you can, some, in some cases, at least in my experience, you can go to very cool places to put a monitoring <laughs> system. So uh, we did do NDT too in this one, but I was a monitoring guy. As I was a receiver, yes. That was, that, okay, so, so since you know and mentioned that, so this was the last time a human being went over these towers. Uh, that was in October and uh, I received observatory collapsed in December. We went in October, we designed the acoustic monitoring systems that we were gonna put in December. Uh, but then the, one of the other, like um, the second cable failed, so no one could go. And then the last cable uh, went in, in December and then the whole thing came down. If you see the video, there is a video of the receiver collapse. You can see one of our boxes with the, with, with, with the WGE sign <laughs> flying in the air. <laughs> So we actually had that box. We we got the we got the death from that box, uh, which is pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs>